Terrascope Radio came along a couple of years into the existence of the Terrascope program, and we wanted to create a class that was communication intensive. The class took us through an entire creative journey, from conception to airing it to the public. Along the way, I think I learned as many concrete skills about audio editing and production as I did about time management, teamwork, and the process of completing a complicated task from beginning to end. If you take a look at the book and you take a look at the chapter, How an Engineer Tells a Story, you'll see that there are snippets by me that provide context, but most of that chapter is really students talking about their own experience and about how the class has transformed them. Uh, and I think that's the most important thing about the class. And I also think it's extremely important that their voices come to the front. There were infinite possibilities for what to record. Each person we talked to, each question we asked, each auxiliary sound we chose to track down. We had to collaboratively and spontaneously make decisions about where our limited microphones would go. I learned through this process that my initial impressions were often wrong. One classmate was incredibly excited about interviewing a fisherman who had participated in Iceland's cod wars, which I thought was a boring waste of time. The audio he collected was fantastic and told a compelling, fascinating story. Terrascope, it's a learning community for first year undergraduates at MIT. So it has social components and academic components. So socially, we have a space we get together and on campus, we give them meals, we go on outings, we act as their academic advisors, we encourage uh, close friendship and community within the first year students who are involved in our community, but also previous years. So it becomes very cross-generational. It crosses boundaries of dormitory, team, major. So it becomes a support network as well as a community. From the academic point of view, we have several classes. They're all characterized by a couple of things. One of them is they all have to do with sustainability in some way or other. Another is they're all team oriented and project based. And another, which I think is incredibly important, is the students have an enormous amount of ownership over the classes themselves, over their academic experience. That's a lot of the foundation of Terrascope is we take them seriously as people who can shape their own work. Uh, and they respond by shaping their own work incredibly beautifully. Our radio pieces were also produced in groups, which was a unique crash course in creative teamwork. Teamwork in other classes typically involves a more dispassionate division of labor and feedback. In radio production, feedback to teammates reflected their own unique ideas and their execution, which felt so much more personal and subjective. We had to balance deadlines and our own conflicting visions for the project, figure out how to incorporate different workflows, and interact effectively with each other. I often ask our students, what surprised you the most when you came here? And their answer is how kind the people are. How oh, good everybody is to each other, how nice everyone is, how much they care about each other. And that's really true. They really do. They really um, care for one another. They make allowances for one another in all kinds of ways. Um, they come with that already in their, in their souls. So that's, we give them an opportunity to act on it, but we don't produce that in them in any way. That's something you that- nurture they, it though. You and your colleagues nurture it. We do. We try to, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, but they give us a great head start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>So there we were, environmentally conscious MIT students caught up in the middle of the whaling debate. So we decided to do a little survey to see how our classmates felt about the issue. Adam and I interrupted them in the middle of a card game to play a prank. We told them that the ice cream they had just eaten for dinner was made from whale's milk. Did you know that that was whale's milk ice cream? Nope. Yeah. What? Oh really? Holy shit. Oh my goodness. I don't wow. think it would have influenced my decision to eat it, but it was no, good. Well, yeah. <laughs> I wow. think it definitely would have influenced my decision to yeah. eat it. Yeah. If I had known that. Wow. So would you eat How they again? harvest whales, Mel? No. Yeah. Oh, we're not actually sure. Yeah. Oh. Uh, they'd probably kill it. I wouldn't eat it again if I knew. Oh, wow. Don't worry. We eventually told them the truth. So I have to tell you the origin of the whale's milk story <clears throat> actually was the night before. So this is on our trip to Iceland and the students were studying uh, fisheries, global fisheries, but also studying Iceland itself, uh, culturally, physically, scientifically, politically. The first night, the ice cream tasted kind of funny and I was just making a joke. And I said, yeah, well, it tastes weird because um, you know, it's made from whale's milk. And they were what? <laughs> And I said, well, you know, they've got these whaling ships. And at that time, Iceland was observing a moratorium on whaling. I said, you know, they've got the ships, they've got the crews, they know how to find the whales, they got to go do something. So they go and they get the whale's milk and they make the ice cream out of it. 
And, you know, if you do it right, if you sort of tell it slowly, slowly, and the, the, the story built and grew from there considerably. And they were kind of, they were buying it. Um, ultimately, I told them the story. I told them that I'd been joking. And they ultimately believed me. But then they used that as part of their exploration. And originally, they didn't go into it with any, okay, this is, this is how we're going to use this to say profound things about Iceland. They just did it because it was fun. Right. And a lot of what they do, they follow because they're having fun doing it. And they thought it would be fun to play that prank on somebody else, knowing what it was like to have it have it played on them. Much, much later, when they were creating the Iceland story, the radio piece, they realized that that actually said something interesting about Iceland. Iceland is kind of sort of one of the couple of countries you could be in and even tell that to anyone and be have any chance at all of being believed. And that's because of this unusual position Iceland is in with respect to its fisheries. Namely, they view the, the whale fishery as just another fishery. That was a really nice way of contextualizing the difference between a typical Icelandic view of the whale fishery and the view of whale fisheries that these students came in with. You know, in a lot of ways, following their sense of humor, following their fun, without too much of an eye on what the final product is going to be, leads to these really wonderful outcomes. When I first met Ari, he was just starting to develop this program. And I remember the first time you invited me to come lecture, it, it, it was one of the first years or two that you had started it and you were telling me about it. And I thought it was just phenomenal because my idea of what I think MIT is like are people with slide rulers and that don't have a heart, they're engineers, but I was so amazed interacting with your students in that program, that they were starting to not only leave with their heads, but also with their heart. And I think when you can marry those two things in any kind of project, whether it's art, science, engineering, that's when really extraordinary things happen. One of the things about Terrascope is, you know, students come to MIT really ready to do good things, to do great things, to make good things, to create things, to design things, to develop things. And I think at most technical schools, you know, we have a lot of, of required classes. You know, you've got to understand calculus and you got to understand physics and chemistry and biology, a variety of other things. And the implicit message sometimes to students is, hey, you got here, welcome. And in a couple of years, you can do really cool stuff. But first, you got to, you know, learn some things. You're not ready. And a core principle of the Terrascope program is they are ready right now. They show up and uh, on their very first day of class, we give them the problem and we back away and we let them get started. And the answer is, yeah, they are ready right now to do this stuff, to be taken seriously and, and to, to do great work right away. Several of my classmates and I were so inspired by our experience in this class that we started our own environmental talk radio show, which we hosted and produced for several years. And I have continued to seek outreach opportunities within my academic research career.